Judge Nunez. I am sure that you have heard the story about New York State Assemblyman Oscar Garcia Rivera, who in 1937 became the first American of Puerto Rican heritage to be elected to public office in the continental United States. Today, you will learn about Felipe N. Torres, who in 1953 became the second Puerto Rican to be elected to the State Assembly, and in 1963, one of the first Latino judges in New York. The story about Felipe Torres is a classic epic about a determined young man who fought racial prejudice, economic constraints, and the language barrier, and succeeded, succeeded in life by becoming an attorney, a legislator, and a judge. Judge Torres is indeed a good role model for all of us to emulate. Let us listen to Supreme Court Justice John Carter as he tells us this fascinating story. This story about a Puerto Rican American demonstrates that each individual is important and that no matter how rich or poor or what the color of your skin or whether or not you speak with an accent, you can become self-sufficient, well-educated, hold important jobs, and become a great role model and mentor for professionals as well as for our younger generation. Like Felipe Torres, the subject of the story, you too can become successful on your own merits. Felipe Torres, for example, although a Puerto Rican with limited resources, traveled to New York City in the year 1919, became an attorney, an elected official, and a family court judge. We had discrimination in Puerto Rico but it is never discrimination as I found here in this country. Here they hated you. You see, they insulted you. If you go to a restaurant and ask for a glass of water, they may give you the glass of water and then they throw the, 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 the glass, break the glass on the floor and so forth, and things like that. I had a goal, and I was working for that goal. And it makes no difference what you will do to me or what they did to me. I don't pay any attention to that and I keep on moving forward because I know at the end they will repent themselves for did what they did or said what they said. This story proves that you too can hardly beat all negative obstacles and win if you fight the way that Felipe Torres fought, not with violence but with the determination to overcome the daily societal problems with self-discipline, scholastic achievement, and most of all, with dignity and pride. Felipe Torres was born in 1997 in Salinas, Puerto Rico, while the United States was still involved in the Spanish-American War. was over and Puerto Rico became a part of the United States. Nineteen years later, President Woodrow Wilson signed into law the Jones Act of 1917. That historic law granted American citizenship to all the people of Puerto Rico. The following year, Felipe Torres enlisted in the United States Army. While serving in Puerto Rico, he met Lieutenant Pedro Alviso Campos, a Puerto Rican patriot and scholar who had graduated from Harvard University. Like Felipe, Lieutenant Campos was also a person of color who suffered racial prejudice. During World War I, Lieutenant Felipe Torres served in a segregated black army company which defended our nation's interests. After serving in the army and receiving an honorable discharge, Lieutenant Torres returned to Ponce High School in Puerto Rico where he earned his high school diploma. Later, he would serve his country during World War II. In spite of his experiences with racism, Felipe Torres moved forward to improve his own life. He did this by studying and working arduously in order to achieve his dreams and aspirations. One day, while reading a newspaper in Old San Juan, Felipe N. Torres noticed an advertisement 
which indicated that in New York City, one can go to school and get a good job. I read somewhere that in New York, I could stay, I could work at the same time study. Now, in view of that, I said, well, let me go there. And I came to this country just for that purpose, to study and then go back to Puerto Rico. I did not uh, came here with the illusion of the plant that remained forever, you see. After borrowing money from an uncle, he headed for the land of opportunity. In New York, only menial and laboring jobs were available to him. Hard work, however, was not a deterrent for him to study law and to prepare for the bar exam. At the Brooklyn Navy Yard, he operated a jackhammer and loaded cement trucks for minimum wages. But uh, I was not actually used to do heavy work. And actually, when I went home and got to bed, you know, I had my body was aching, painful, and so forth, and so forth. But that did not stop me anyway. I continued doing the same thing over and over. I was working. And at the same time, attending school. And I had to pay tuition in the school. I had to do any type of work. I was really willing to do that, do you see, in order to continue my education. Later, he worked in the kitchen of the Biltmore Hotel, where his boss would laugh at him, stating that he was wasting his time studying because there was no place in this society for Puerto Ricans. Well, he, he, he was uh, a European pharaoh. They claimed that he was German, I don't know. And actually, uh, he treats you as nothing. Actually, you see, he had no reason to talk to me. He spoke to my immediate boss in the pantry, did you see? But uh, they laughed because they saw me carrying those books. That is it. They continue laughing until one day the New York Times published the list of those who had passed the bar, and they found my name there. Well, when they uh, discovered that, condition changed. That man who would not talk to me then came to me and offered help. He gave me letters of recommendation. He did this and did that, oh yes. The condition change. Being married, working full time, and attending school at Fordham University and at the City College of New York was indeed difficult for Felipe. But with the aid of his dedicated wife, Innocencia, the Torreses became recognized as one of the most exemplary families in the state of New York. Despite myriad problems, this couple raised five successful sons and daughters. Felipe led at home by example. He taught his children self-discipline and the true value of education. Today, all are college graduates. He even studied how to play musical instruments in order to set an example for his children, who are also musically inclined. My house was a crazy place, you see. One practicing violin here, violin, other piano there, and so forth and so on. My plan was that they have sufficient knowledge of music, practice and theory, so that they can understand it and will be able to appreciate it. I knew that music, it should be part of the education of an individual. You see, music is a language by itself, and everybody should know what music is. I don't mean to say dancing music, but music as a study. Music is very convenient to the children because also train their mind. Among their favorite artists are the famous Puerto Rican composer Rafael Hernandez and the world-renowned Figueroa family. To, to grow up, you know, without the kind of a father and a husband that Felipe has been is a, is a great handicap to uh, Puerto Rican families and to Puerto Rican children. So that um, when he was decorated, when he was honored a week ago Sunday by the, the Puerto Rican Institute as an outstanding example of a husband and a father, and uh, of the leader of a Puerto Rican family. It was a great joy to me because that is the example, I think, that has to be prominent and impressive in the Puerto Rican community so that they'll have that, uh, 
that model to, uh, to follow. He bridges two different periods of the Puerto Rican migration. The Puerto Rican migration post-World War I, 1917 to 1945, was the early segment of the Puerto Rican experience, and it's been very different from that of the second segment. The second period of the Puerto Rican migration, the more important period from the point of view of numbers and intensity of experience, was the experience after World War II, when the large numbers of Puerto Ricans began to come to New York City. Now, in the first period, he was a young man growing up in the city, what we would call the pioneros, the pioneers of the Puerto Rican experience. And he's an outstanding example of uh, the accomplishments of the people in that period. The second period was a period of public service, mainly as an assemblyman in the legislature in Albany and as a judge on the family court. And uh, in both of those uh, capacities, he played a very significant role because the period post-World War II was far more difficult and had much more intensive difficulties about it. And consequently, to have a person like Felipe Torres, both as a legislator and as a judge, was an extremely important factor in the Puerto Rican community. After moving his law office and residence from Spanish Harlem to the Bronx, this determined attorney and public servant was nominated by the Democratic Party for the position of state assemblyman and was elected to that office. In 1953, he became the second American of Puerto Rican heritage to be elected to the New York State Assembly. In 1963, after serving in the state legislature for 10 years, then New York City Mayor Robert F. Wagner appointed him to a judgeship in the family court. His eldest son, Frank Torres, was also elected in his own right to the assembly seat vacated by his father in the 4th Assembly District of the Bronx. He too would become a judge. In an unusual twist of history, both generations of Torreses have served on the bench on the same day in the same courthouse. And what he provided for them uh, was a role model. He could provide them with inspiration that it can be done, that obstacles could be overcome, that if one applies oneself, no matter what the obstacles are before them, be it poverty, be it a need to uh, support one's own family members, uh, what he indicated to them with a little e extra effort that with industry and with motivation and with desire, one could achieve the top of the ladder. For indeed, uh, uh, becoming a jurist in our community is on the uh, top of the ladder. Example for uh, all you, so here's a, a gentleman who's 93 years young, uh, who uh, could uh, be sitting in an easy chair uh, watching television and dozing off. Instead, he is still active. He's active in the community. He's active in the law. He's a member of the character committee uh, in the first department, Appellate Division First Department, uh, which uh, looks over the credentials of all uh, youths who wish to come and become members of the bar after they pass their bar exam. He uh, is a judicial hearing officer, and I myself have given to uh, assigned to Judge uh, Torres uh, numerous matters which are assigned to judicial hearing officers to take a great deal of the burdens of the heavy caseload which are faced in the civil branch of the Supreme Court and which he has handled, and handled well. The work as a lawyer or as a judge is not work. It's fun. I like to do that regardless how many hours I have to put, and regardless of how difficult the situation may be. The more difficult the case, the more pressure I get by trying to solve it. So you see, I like to do what I am doing. Judge Torres continues to practice at the firm of Torres and Torres with his youngest son, Austin Torres, also an attorney. Judge so Torres' countless contributions to the development of the Puerto Rican and Latino communities of New York are well documented, 
and the numerous publications and articles about this extraordinary public servant. The third area where his example uh, is most important is the way he dealt with the whole question of the ambiguity around color and uh, facing the difficulties of the, the way color is a problem in the American population, the population on the mainland United States. And I think the fact that he was able to face that without being disheartened, without being discouraged, without uh, quitting, but facing it with a great deal of self-confidence and self-assurance and courage that uh, he is an outstanding example to the Puerto Rican community of uh, the way that even that ambiguity and that problem can be overcome. This American story has exemplified the true meaning about the words, where there's a will, there's a way. Judge Torres has proven that regardless of racial and language barriers, economic constraints, or constant negative peer pressure, you can prevail and achieve immeasurable success and community pride. When I came here, I came in as a Puerto Rican, an American citizen, yes but as a Puerto Rican. And I can tell you that now, after so many years, I don't feel anything less being a Puerto Rican than I did when I came here. I feel, oh yes, I am interested now in what the, is going to happen to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico may have to decide whether they want to be independent, or the commonwealth, or the state. I am interested in that. And I taught my children to speak the language, Spanish. All five of them speak, speak Spanish, you see. I am proud to be a Puerto Rican. I am proud to be a Puerto Rican.